It's very smooth. I dig this a lot. I feel like I need a Manhattan in my hand. Should have brought my the, the vodka with me. I should have brought the vodka. <laughs> Here we go. A little vodka on the Monday morning? Should have. Oh, not, not, not opposed to that. Boston Free Radio. That was the internet right there with La Di Da out of LA. You've got to love that track, La Di Da. It is a summer jam, in my opinion. So, Angela Carnaccio, Scene and Style, Belgioco Media. Welcome back, Hello. darling. And I know that you've got some scoop for us in regards to Boston Fashion Week. What's good? I do. So, the official schedule does not come out until the first week of September, so be sure to visit bostonfashionweek.com to check that out when you're ready to go. But we have some fun stuff that's already happening. So Anne-Marie Lafucci, she has her swimwear, and also she's dabbling in lingerie these days. So she has a show no, coming up at the Rosaria on September 20th with a local jewelry designer, Larry Weymouth. Uh, it's a beautiful restaurant out in Saugus, actually from the owners and family of Jay Pachi's and Son in the North End. So that'll be a good spot. And then the beloved, our lovely Olga. Oh, MG, Olga. She MCM. is having her second annual show. Her last year's show was beautiful. So on September 28th at the Hilton in Woburn, she's going to be doing her benefit show for Project Smile again. Fashion for Fire. Yes, Fashion for Fire. And it's hosted by Antoinette Antonio from Channel 5. And she's going to have a lineup of amazing designers. Beautiful dancers, everything from A to Z. It was oh, such oh, an amazing show last correction. year. Fire or fashion? I said it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'll forgive you because you love each other very much. <laughs> he said it. I did. She said it. I did. I, I not. I see the love. I see the love. Um, wait, 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 hold on a second here. Yes. Put the uh, information on pause for a second here. Now, you say you see the love. I see the love between you. She was here last week. I watched live. You did. You did. I watched live, and you guys are so nice to each other. Aw. So nice. Well, you know, it's Olga, and I'm Sterling. She's gorgeous. And, Hello. Well, I, yeah, I'm, I'm no slouch either, but I'm, <laughs> no, but Oh, uh, you handsome devil, Sterling. Go on, go on. Okay, so Tanisha actually Yoga. has a... <laughs> Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Tanisha, <laughs> you, you're killing me. I know. Right. Who doesn't love Olga, though? I get it. I get it. So, Tanisha actually has a fashion panel coming up at Bloomingdale's on September 29th featuring some local favorites like Kathy Ben Harris yes. and David Joseph. So, that eBright link is online if you want to check that out. And my beloved... Beloved Denise Ajar, my fashion icon, my fashion crush, will be having a informal show at the Intercontinental on Wednesday, October 3rd. Nice. It's going to be beautiful. She's going to have her fall line showing. The models are going to be sashaying through the actual hotel from her boutique where she will be having an after party with light bites and shopping as well. And... The opening night, so Jay Cauldron got back to me yesterday and told me to uh, mention that the opening night will be called The Power of Women, The Future of Boston Fashion. So that sounds pretty cool. It's going to be featuring six new up-and-coming designers, which, you know, is good. we got to highlight our young bucks, get them, get them seen, get them known. we got to highlight the young bucks. Yes, we do. We do. Super and party. So where's this happening? Uh, that, I don't know if the location has been decided just yet. Like I mentioned, um, everything will be up September 30th, so you can visit bostonfashionweek.com to get those official details. Yes. And this year is actually dedicated to the beautiful and lovely late Linda Cole, who had passed away recently from cancer. And Sadly, she yes. was just a force in the fashion industry here in Boston. She was beautiful. She was lovely. She did many gorgeous shows for Denise Fajar. Pictorials. She was just beautiful. She was an absolutely beautiful woman. And Indeed. it is going to be dedicated to her this year. That's very, very cool. Yes. That's a very so, cool gesture. It's know? great. And I mean. It really brings the whole Boston Fashion Week together. It does. You know? with knowing that someone as powerful as this from our industry, you know, her memory will be observed yes. for this year's Boston Fashion Week. Just her smile used to, it would 
light me up. I remember I did a show with her and Denise Ajar one year. It was the runway on the Greenway. And you know me, I'm a crazy little Italian girl running around like a nutbag <laughs> half the time. And I was just so flustered when I got there. And I was like, ah! And I walk into Denise's boutique and Linda's just standing there with this beautiful presence. And she smiles at me and says, hello, Angela. And she gives me a hug. And I just, I was, I felt it right there. I was like, why do I care about half the shit I do? Look at this woman's yeah. vibe and energy and she just doesn't give a shit because life is so good. And that's how she exactly. felt every day and she portrayed that to people. And I saw her photo shared many times over yes. on social media when she uh, sadly left us. Yes. She was beloved out here, you know, by so many people. Oh my God, she was just such a nice person on top of like, she was absolutely beautiful yes, and a good was. person. <laughs> Agreed. Those are tough to find. Agreed. That being said, you guys, Boston Fashion Week, September 30th through October 6th, 2018. Yes. BostonFashionWeek.com is the click for all information about Boston Fashion Week. In September, you'll have a full lineup revealed. And why is Fred Rogers on the page? <laughs> I don't okay, I'm looking at BostonFashionWeek.com. I, <laughs> I am looking at BostonFashionWeek.com. I have questions. <laughs> So, Jay. okay, Mr. Rogers is on <laughs> the page. Jay Cauldron shared this image, and he's quoted underneath, it's important to know when we need to stop, reflect, and receive. In our competitive world, that might be called a waste of time. I've learned that those times can be the preemable to periods of enormous growth. And actually, he mentions that... Um, on February 9th, 2018, 50 years ago, a month shy of his third birthday, the first episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood aired on PBS. There were, there were 31 seasons. Actually, back then it was NET. Yes, it was NET back then. It was not PBS. But it's interesting. So Mr. Rogers is an, as a hero to him, I guess. Huh? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm reading his entire no, yeah. thing here. He is. A, you know, a lot of people aren't aware of... I gotten to know a little bit about Mr. Rogers because there are things that Jay will post and yeah. he was a very in-depth kind of guy. It was, he was. It was pretty interesting. And hey, I mean, come on, look at his fashion statement. He look made, at that. He look actually, at that. Well, he actually makes a good quote here, does Jay Cauldron, the founder. He says, quote, you know, it could be that years of watching him making a wardrobe change at the start of every episode planted the seeds for what would become my career in fashion. So, what does this have to do with Boston Fashion Week, he says. I wanted to set the tone for how we'll be moving forward with each opportunity to cultivate and celebrate fashion in all its forms, in and around the city, throughout the rest of the year. We will be good neighbors, unquote. Beautiful. I can think that, you know? I don't like that, actually, yeah. I that's... watched Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I think everyone at one point watched Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood at some time in their yeah. life. Can you name any of... The citizens of the neighborhood of make believe. Oh my God! No, I just remember the trolley. I remember the trolley. Okay, let's see how good my memory is here at this. King Friday, Lady okay, a Lady yeah. Aberlin, Lady Elaine <gasps> Fairchild, Cornflake especially. Look at Conan O'Brien, <laughs> X the Owl. You know who looked high. Oh my! I can't believe you're really going let's down see. the line with all this right now. And then we took it away from make believe land. Yeah, Mr. McFeely. Speed of yeah. delivery, speed of delivery. You had, oh chef, my God. you had Chef Brockett around the neighborhood. You had Henny Manegri around the neighborhood. He would feed the fish. And the reason why Mr. Rogers always said on every episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, I'm going to feed the fish now. I'm going to feed the fish. The reason he did that was because a blind uh, fan of Mr. Rogers wrote in and said that whenever, you know, actually, no, she, she expressed that she was concerned about his fish. <laughs> Because she didn't know if he was feeding them or not. Too much. Oh. So that point forward, he would say in every episode, I'm, gonna, I'm feeding the fish now. Oh, that's hilarious. Knowing that viewer may be watching. But I was mad at him as a kid for, for a short time. Oh, why? What did he do to you? He ruined the Incredible Hulk for me. Why? Did he, like, shame the Hulk? No. What happened was, I was a fan of the Incredible Hulk TV show as a boy. Yeah. With Bill Bixby as David Banner and Lou Ferrigno as old Greenskin, you know? Well... They had an episode where Mr. Rogers visited the set of The Incredible Hulk, and Bill Bixby was there to greet him, and they showed how Lou Ferrigno got into character as the Hulk. The fake nose, the false teeth, the wig, the green body makeup, 
And I'm sitting there in disbelief, and I'm watching these, this, this entire show being unraveled before my eyes and ruined Aww. for me. I, I couldn't suspend disbelief anymore. <laughs> you know? You, I'm sorry. You, you he pulled did the that curtain to back. You. It's like, yeah. you know, it's like, you don't. A kid kind of sort of knows that Santa Claus isn't really a thing, that's really your dad wearing pillows and a big suit, okay? But we don't want to be told and have it shoved in our face. True. Imagine watching Jurassic Park, and behind you in the theater, some dude's going, Oh, man, it's CGI. It looks so fucking fake, man. You know? <laughs> you smack him. Don't ruin it for the kiddies. Right. You know? So, for a short time, and I, if Jay's listening, I'm sorry for, you know, throwing any shade at Fred Rogers' memory <laughs> with this, but I was mad at him for a while because of that Incredible Hulk episode. It's too funny. I never thought discussing Boston fashion we'd list a Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood discussion, but here we are. Here we are. Here we are talking about Mr. Rogers. I can't believe well, it. Well, I like that he says, you know, he brings the neighborhood. Like, we're all trying to collaborate a lot more. Like, I sit on the board of Boston Fashion Group International with Jay. He's also a board leader as well. You know, I, I, I missed this earlier on when I quoted him. I missed this entire thing. I actually had my screen only scrolled down so far, but the whole quote says at the, at the end of it, we will be good neighbors. We will honor our inner child. We will embrace play as serious learning. We will look for the helpers. We will appreciate others just as they are. And kindness will be the measure of our success. If only society could fucking learn that just a little bit. True that. True that. That's what I mean. Like, you know, it's a little random. Like, I didn't actually read all that because I was a little busy last night. So it's glad to actually sit there and read that because it just, it means so much. Like, it has so much to do with the discussion we were just having of embracing our inner child and letting the tie go. Jay even mentions that the U.S. Postal Service now has Mr. Rogers' rubber stamp and <laughs> the documentary Won't Be My Neighbor dropped at Sundance this past year with uh, the same name as Tangy Maya MIA did. <laughs> but Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, I mean, Won't You Be My Neighbor, you know, made it to theaters first. And a biopic starring Tom Hanks is in the works. Very cool. Well, anything, Very that, bring, cool. anything that brings Tom Hanks back to his roots just a little bit dig is it. good for me. Yeah, you know? dig it, for sure. Well, all y'all, be good neighbors and stay tuned in. Up next, we have more with Angela Carnaccio, including the latest on both local media Yay. and scene in style. But right now, here is Nina Nesbitt. This is not make believe, this is real life on Storytology Live. I never thought we would get to this. <laughs> I forgot that that was there when I went on last night. I was like, I'm Mr. Like, Rogers. Mr. Rogers? Wait a minute. Yeah, Jay, you know, Jay's very intellectual. So when he puts something up there, it generally has a pretty intense meaning to it. So that's pretty cool. I dig it, Jay. I dig it, Jay. I remember the song, too. Not the, I mean, I remember the, the intro, of course. I remember the, the banding song. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling to know you're, to, you're growing inside. And when you wake <laughs> up ready to say, it's going to be a special today. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling, a feeling to know that I'll be back when the day is new and I've got more ideas for you. <laughs> and you'll have something you'll want to talk about. I will too. Oh my god. We still have yours. We you still have yours. Wow. <laughs> I think I'm a little speechless at the moment. You remember that whole song. That's so fun. You couldn't have been that mad at him then. I was. That, that, that shows everything when I was a kid. That shows everything. You ruined your moment. Go Sterling, he said. Who is that? Pete. Not Pete. I drowned up poor Nina Nesbitt's song there. I drowned up. <laughs> Let's do 